China's 100,000-ton sea giant can easily pack the U.S. aircraft carrier, which can be called a mobile sea base. Let's take a closer look in this video. With the development of the world's shipbuilding industry, various types of ships with advanced performance have been built, including a very special class of ship that is semi-submersible ship. Although it is not as powerful as an aircraft carrier, it has a strong carrying capacity and can even pack large and medium-sized aircraft carriers away with ease. Semi-submersible ships specialize in the transportation of large cargo and their own weight is also very large, which is similar to that of an aircraft carrier. It has excellent performance and a wide range of uses and has become the darling of countries all over the world. On December 8, 2016, a large ship with a dead weight of 100,000 tons in China was officially delivered. This huge ship named Xian Guanghua is a unique semi-submersible ship. From the point of view of weight alone, Zingguanghua can hold Japan's existing four helicopter carriers at the same time. Today, there are only a dozen semi-submersible ships in the world, and China accounts for more than half of them. So how difficult is it to build a semi-submersible boat? Why can't even the United States and Japan build it, but China can stand alone in the world? The so-called semi-submersible ship, as the name suggests, half of it can dive into the sea, and half of it is a giant ship at sea that surfaced. The full name of a semi-submersible ship is a semi-submersible mothership. This is a dual-purpose ship with strong comprehensive performance. Since the production of semi-submersible ships has high requirements on the manufacturing industry, this technology was completely monopolized by the Netherlands before 2002. Any country in the world that wants to transport large ships needs to pay high charter fees. With the increase in the number of Chinese warships, the demand for semi-submersible ships with strong transportation capabilities is also increasing. If you rely entirely on the loan from the Netherlands, you will need to pay a huge price. Especially in the event of sudden danger at sea, if there is no semi-submersible vessel of its own, it will cause irreparable human and economic losses. What is exciting is that since 2002, China has continuously made breakthroughs in semi-submersible ship technology and has produced 12 ships in just a dozen years, making it the country with the largest number of semi-submersible ships in the world. Among them, Zingguanghua was the largest semi-submersible ship in China at that time. Its deck area of 13,500 square meters is equivalent to the size of two standard football fields. Such an amazing load and deck area is born for transporting large ships. Almost all large warships, submarines, and offshore oil exploration platforms need it for transportation. When the semi-submersible ship is loaded with cargo, the deck needs to be submerged into the water first, and the huge cargo is floated on the water above the deck by a crane, and then the liquid pressed in the water tank is discharged to make the whole float and the cargo will directly fall on the deck. Since many countries do not have such a large number of operating projects, their market demand will be small. Not to mention the lack of relevant technology and talent support, even if a semi-submersible vessel can be manufactured, it will be abandoned because of the high cost. Only countries with strong industrial manufacturing capabilities can play with such behemoths and then devote themselves to the global market. In contrast, countries such as the United States and Japan have found it difficult to manufacture and operate the industry. This is because semi-submersible ships, like aircraft carriers, appear to have simple functions. In fact, as comprehensive mother ships, they must be equipped with complete facilities and strict standards. 
As long as a technical standard fails or a certain infrastructure is lacking, it may cause huge losses. Therefore, a semi-submersible ship is the embodiment of a country's comprehensive national strength and the embodiment of industrial integrity and manufacturing capabilities. This is also the reason why many countries cannot manufacture semi-submersible ships. Because the offshore trailer is equipped with complete infrastructure, it can play a more extensive role in actual use. Shipping ships by ship is the main work content of most semi-submersible ships, including accident shipwreck salvage and warship transportation. For example, China's White Marlin used to salvage and transport South Korea's Shiryu. During salvage, the ship will dive to a depth of 20 to 30 meters underwater, take the ship in need of rescue into its arms, and then float away by surfacing. Incidents of U.S. warships colliding with ships also happen from time to time, and the number of U.S. warships is particularly large. It is difficult to guarantee that similar accidents will not occur in future exercises, and semi-submersible ships are generally used to deal with these accidents. However, the United States cannot independently produce semi-submersible ships and can only rent them from China or the Netherlands. Therefore, semi-submersible vessels have always assumed the role of offshore trailers. On the other hand, with the deepening of deep-sea oil exploitation, it has become a difficult problem to operate offshore. First of all, the overall oil exploration platform and drilling rig are very large, looking from a distance like a small fortress built of building blocks with a maximum size of tens of thousands of square meters. One can imagine the difficulty of transporting such a behemoth to the sea. Coupled with the deep water and big waves at sea, if the infrastructure is not solid, it will cause huge accidents. At this time, with its open deck and huge load capacity, the semi-submersible ship can easily carry an oil exploration platform wider than the hull. Moreover, due to the high proportion of volume submerged in the water, it is not easily affected by the waves on the sea surface and can maintain better stability. It is suitable for use as a working platform on the water so that the staff can also walk on the ground at sea. In addition to civilian functions, semi-submersible ships also have high military development value. Although China's sea area is vast, the number of sea bases and aircraft carriers is very small, so warships and aircraft performing missions at sea often lack fuel supplies, and semi-submersible ships can play a role at this time. The military semi-submersible ship Donghaideo fully possesses such capabilities. Because it can accommodate dozens of helicopters on its vast deck and store sufficient fuel resources, it can be used as a mobile sea military base. In addition, ships, submarines, tanks, armored vehicles, large-scale engineering structures, etc. can also be transferred by towing or carrying. On July 10, 2015, China's Donghai Island semi-submersible ship joined the South China Sea Fleet, known as the Chinese Navy's first new concept mobile landing platform ship. In fact, as early as 2011, the United States has already started to invest in the research and development of military semi-submersible ships. Once it is used on a large scale in the future, it can double its ocean-going troop delivery capacity. According to calculations, a military semi-submersible ship can carry a variety of helicopters and fixed-wing fighter jets and at the same time carry 1,000 fully armed army officers and soldiers, and more than 100 tanks or combat vehicles. The cavalry force projection capability is more than five times that of the U.S. active amphibious assault ship, and the future can be expected. The future of military semi-submersible ships has a broad space for development. 
China's military strategy has always focused on defense. The more advanced nuclear submarines, rocket forces, and bombers can attack foreign fleets from multiple dimensions. However, the weakness of the aircraft carrier fleet at sea prevents China from effectively attacking enemy nuclear submarines. Under such circumstances, China has paid more and more attention to the research and development of aircraft carriers, and has successively built three aircraft carriers, Liaoning, Shandong, and Fujian, but there is still a gap compared with the 11 aircraft carriers of the United States. The development of an aircraft carrier is quite difficult, because it needs to be impeccable in all aspects in order to become the brain of countless warships and nuclear fighters. An aircraft carrier has a very wide range of uses. It is an airport, a logistics warehouse, a transshipment hub, and a command center. Just like the capital of a country, it not only needs to manage its own operations, but also needs to undertake a country's complex functional system, which means that the pressure on the aircraft carrier is huge. If military semi-submersible ships can share some of the functions and pressure of the aircraft carrier, does it mean that it will be easier for China to build an aircraft carrier fleet? And if the aircraft carrier fleet really wants to achieve this goal as a transport ship undertaking logistical support work, it is equivalent to the second heart of the naval fleet. Military semi-submersible ships need to carry out more complex armaments while maintaining their own carrying advantages. Therefore, the most important thing is to equip with a complete defense system, such as replacing the special steel of the same level as the aircraft carrier, adding a signal shielding system, etc. All in all, semi-submersible ships, such auxiliary heavy motherships, are important weapons for the country in both military and civilian use. As the first country to develop and use this technology, China has an absolute advantage in the development of semi-submersible ships, and it is expected that it will have a place in the future sea power. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more great content. See you next time.